We can only understand what we can measure. And for our changing planet, some of our best tools are above us in space. Satellites are providing us with crucial data to deal with the climate crisis. So what do they see and who's got access to it? We've come a long way since satellites sent the first pictures back from orbit in the 1960s. Back then, governments were mostly interested in space for communication, weather, and of course, spying. The 1970s saw the first boom for space-based environmental sciences. Satellites began measuring our planet's oceans, ice, temperatures, and gases. By the 2000s, lasers were mapping ice melt to the millimeter. Now, radio waves reveal the moisture in the soil and lasers map the variations in our vegetation. We're filling in a more detailed picture of how our planet is changing. But we've got blind spots, and not everyone is getting all of the information. In Sub-Saharan Africa, people both depend on agriculture and face some of the most dangerous effects of climate change. But without satellites of their own, many of these countries can't plan properly for environmental disasters. But this picture may soon change. Today, satellites are smaller, cheaper, and there are more rockets deploying them. Soon, dozens of launches will serve the continent. On top of that, the African Development Bank is now buying data collected from Western satellites. And private companies too, like Google and Planet, are beginning to provide more data to the countries that need it. Next year, Zimbabwe will launch a small satellite fleet, its first, to monitor its natural resources. But the politics can get messy. Like in Brazil, when a government-run satellite program was about to reveal the surging rate of deforestation in the Amazon. President Jair Bolsonaro sacked its director and said their evidence was lies. But if we can put politics aside, getting more data to more people means more opportunities to get ahead of the climate crisis.